and welcome back to another episode of Art Life. This week we're going to be talking about brushes. I'm Jessie. I've been a full-time artist for 10 years and thought it about time I start sharing my painting techniques and adventures. Subscribe to join me every week for a window into my art life. I tend to work with oil brushes, which usually involves hog hair or badger hair, even though I'm a vegetarian. Um, but there are synthetic brushes as well that I sometimes use. It's really about individual taste. Artists tend to gravitate to certain styles, shapes, sizes of brushes, depending on the paintings they're doing, or um, yeah, you get strangely attached to brushes. I've got a few brushes which are like 15 years old, which even though I tried to take care of them, maybe when I was an art student, I didn't, and now they are like rock hard. So I can talk a little bit later about how to look after your brushes and make sure they last for as long as possible. Um, so, so I tend to use filbert brushes, which is a slightly round shaped brush, which is very good for soft painting. You have flat brushes as well, which are good for the sharper edges. Obviously you have uh, priming brushes and big brushes for massive gestures with painting. Um, you have special effects brushes when you're going to do some monster brush marks on huge paintings. These are the brush strip. These are the kind of brushes you want, and you can kind of find these. I found this one at an antique shop. You can find brushes anywhere, really. Art shops are the best place, obviously. Um, but also, sort of finding unusual brushes for unusual marks could be quite fun. This one I got on holiday in Venice. It's five little brushes pushed together, and it's amazing for um, these really crazy gestures when I'm trying to do something sort of strange and slightly abstract. Um, the key thing is. The length of the brush will affect how much control you have over the painting. So when I'm painting with my favourite brush, so a long handle brush like this is perfect when you're trying to reach parts of paintings in your studio um, quickly with good gestures that you wouldn't normally be able to with a much smaller brush. Um, however, if you do have a short handle, short handles are brilliant for when you need loads of control. It's hard to get control with a really long brush, but with a short handle brush you can get into uh, some really good detail as well. So it's good to have a different range of sizes, lengths, widths, shapes with all your brushes so you can play with every single painting. How I normally work with my painting is that I will apply paint with one brush and with another I will use it to smoke it, so sort of using it as a special effects brush. Um, it's really lovely to have um, a few brushes for dark colours, light colours, um, smoky colours, dry brushes, wet brushes. You don't want to have too much paint on one brush because a painting can very quickly, uh, with wet on wet painting, get a bit murky and grey. So having uh, various different brushes using different colours is a great way to keep your, um, your painting clean. So one of the main reasons this week I wanted to talk about brushes was because I found uh, with Rose Marinko a series of master painting brushes for oil which have just revolutionised how I've been painting this week. All the paintings that were going wrong in my studio are suddenly going right. So I ordered their catalogue, uh, again this is not a plug, this is me genuinely excited about finding a new kind of painting tool, um, and they actually show you in the back of the catalogue all the different brushes you have and the different marks you can make. So whether you're looking for a certain kind of brush stroke, if you're block painting or if you're doing um, some smoky brushes with a fan. I have filbert brushes so you can you can kind of see here the, the soft marks I was talking about that you get with a filbert um, or with a sort of stubby flat brush, the kind of much sharper edges you get. Um, so having one of these catalogues, if, if you know, from the Rose Marinko website could be quite good if you want to experiment with different shapes and styles. So this brush was a priming brush, um, although I actually ended up using it for a huge ocean wave commission I did called Atlantic Wave, where I was using um, the straight edge with bright turquoise and doing these huge gestures uh, to capture like light in water. Um, which was an incredible brush for that. I, I wasn't really kind of thinking that a priming brush could be useful for like large scale work like that. Um, a good thing actually to sort of talk about before we get into more of the marks and brushes um, are palette knives because palette knives as well 
some people use palette knives as brushes like the way that um you can kind of slap paint on from your um palette and just literally put it directly onto um the canvas they're not just for mixing you can actually paint with palette knives they give you a lovely texture which is also called impasto um, particularly if you use a kind of beeswax medium or a medium with your painting to make it much more solid and like thick i think monet did this as well with impasto just lots of palette knife gestures they can be brushes as well so that's a good thing to also experiment with at home if you have a palette knife did you know um as well another fun fact um we were actually taught in florence to spit on our brushes after cleaning them so to look after them you're meant to clean them with oil oil and oil does clean a brush um i always then use a little bit of fairy liquid um like just to strip off any kind of paint which is residually on the on the hairs of the brush um but then we were told to spit on the brush and kind of wrap it in some like kitchen towel or something just to keep it uh, keep the shape um i think there's other um there's other mediums which will keep the shape of your brushes but it, Apparently, I mean, I don't really do it, but apparently a uh, spit is a really good way to keep the shape of the brush. So um, Amiga brushes are brilliant for the really powdery skies that I'm doing at the moment. They are fluffy, they make fluffy marks as you're like kind of doing these gestures on the canvas. Um, they are quite good for smoking paint. You can use it to um, just bulk areas in with a big surface like this. It's not that helpful for doing small work, so I would say anything bigger than A1 uh, would be perfect for a bigger brush like this. So a brief history of the paintbrush, because I love my history. Uh, you have the handle, the crimp, the ferrule, and the bristles with most brushes. Ancient Egyptians actually would have used macerated reeds. You see these often in hieroglyphics in ancient Egyptian art. Uh, you also see in Asia, in ancient Asian art, um, feathers being depicted as uh, the tool for painting with brushes then. You also have in the Western world, always animal hair, until more recently we've now had got synthetic brushes. We have the Italian artist Cennino Cennini in the Craftsman's Handbook in the 1390s to thank for actually talking about the uses of the paintbrush in art. And then in the 17th century, you start to see artists choosing brushes rather than just making them. Different shapes, different fan brushes. Um, there's a much wider range of evidence that we hold the paintbrush differently now to how we did then. Now we, we generally tend to use paintbrushes almost like pencils with the brush um, parallel to our surface whereas uh, in historical paintings you often see artists holding the brush way back at the end of the handle um, more like that so interesting even modern day iPads now have brush apps on them you can paint with your brush on an iPad so technology is giving us new brushes all the time um, yeah good to know so what are you going to do now so now I want to show you um, a few techniques I use with my brushes. Um, I wish I had all the brushes to show, you, to show you every different mark you can make, but I'll just give you a quick demo about different ways to use brushes um, when you're working on canvas. So I'm just gonna give you a quick demo now of the brushes I mainly use on my day-to-day -day painting practice. Um, it's a flat brush, a long filbert, a blending brush, which has kind of got a nice big um, size so you can add it for special effects with smoking, and then just a palette knife for mixing paint and occasionally applying it on the canvas. So I'll give you a quick demo on just an old painting I had lying around that I can just play with, and if I make a mess it doesn't matter too much. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. So this is the long filbert. Again, just a lovely round bit of colour on the end of that whole hairbrush. Um, so these are the kind of shapes you get, like a lovely round kind of oval. Don't worry about why it's separating, it's just because it's quite a um, primed surface underneath. Um, and then again, just great for these soft, curvy marks. So yeah, that's perfect for a round brush. Now, with a um, like larger brush, which I use for smoking, you can see you can then blend everything you've been doing with that big brush, and then suddenly your marks change completely. 
and what was quite intense suddenly feels really soft. Big brushes are great because again, you can really smooth out the intense bits of paint on your canvas. Again, um, it's good to have a lot of brushes uh, with different uh, tones, like dark blues, reds, warms. So with all your paint brushes, you're not kind of mixing them too much. You just kind of keep them for one thing, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so that's the big brush. With a palette knife, I'd occasionally just get a bit of color straight on the palette knife if I needed some sharp edges. I need to just to make some big gestures, which is quite fun. Like that, with the palette knife. And maybe with even a bigger brush that if you have lying around, just doing literally just a few marks. You don't have to press hard, you just lightly go over the canvas just to blend it in. Um, I usually do vertical and horizontal lines to keep it simple. Uh, great for just uh, creating some space, some smoky effects. Suddenly this is looking a bit more like a kind of distant dreamy cloud. But again, just the smallest bit of paint goes so far on the brush. Uh, okay, so let's use the flat brush now, which is just a sort of stubby flat brush, just so you can see the difference in marks compared to the, so this is great for more like straight lines, windows and sharp edges and you get with, you know, lovely thin, just play really, thin lines. You can't really get the same sort of effect with a, with a round brush. Like that and then again, go back to your like smoking special effects brush. Blend it in. Don't be too like precious as well. Like I'm not too precious. So I just um, so yeah, they're my they're my favourite brushes to use. It's it's so easy. Like again, you could have um, maybe a pointier brush um, if you wanted to do some really sharp details. So let's just get something. So a brush which is a lot thinner and rounder would be good for sort of those smaller marks you might want to do to capture light. Outlining, great for a thinner brush. You don't always want to use big brushes, sometimes you just want to use a... Um, again, get one of your blending brushes and then dab it away. Not my finest work, but it's good. It's good to show you just like what you can do with the different brushes. It's about, it's different shapes giving you different effects. And it obviously depends how much pressure you put on the canvas, what colors you're using. So thanks for watching this week's episode of Art Life on the paintbrush. I hope you found it interesting. Um, if there's anything you'd like me to go into with the paintbrush in the future, maybe some more history or different techniques and tips and tricks for looking after them, do let me know in the comments below and I can get back to you on that. Um, so yeah, like and subscribe and join me next Monday for another episode of Art Life.